So this offseason is approaching vastly quick, and the Knicks pretty much are going to be walking on a tightrope, doing sort of a balancing act because they got to try to keep the team competitive to attract future free agents. But at the same time, the other side of the balancing act, they can't dig in too deep because this offseason doesn't really have a deep roster of just great free agents that can really change our team. And next offseason, 2022, the free agency list is incredible. And this is where I'm going to touch base on the Colin Sexton rumor that the Knicks are interested in making a trade for him. But the main issue with him is that he will be extension eligible for 2022. And I'm not sure if the Knicks want to dig that far deep into the cap to extend him over some of the potential game-changing free agents that will be available in 2022. So I'm just looking into the player archetype of Colin Sexton. He's a volume scorer. He doesn't pass as much, but he is something that we do need. A guy who can make a play on his own, who could create his own scoring lane. It's something we definitely do need. But Cleveland always had a funny way of saying that they don't want somebody. We've seen it play out with Kevin Love and other various players that came out of their team. And they clearly don't want to extend Sexton. So the Cavs don't have that much leverage in making a trade like this. This is looking like it's a salary dump move by Cleveland, but at the same time, they're trying to gain some assets. It would make sense for the Knicks to give up either their 19th or their 21st pick for this year's draft for Sexton. But at the same time, the kicker is that extension for 2022. I'm not sure him being so close to that player extension is the situational play we need to make right now. He's a 6'1 combo guard, not really a point guard because of his passing skills. I believe he's labeled a point guard because of his height, but he plays more like a shooting guard. But in today's NBA, there's a lot of guys playing at the point guard position, but they're not necessarily true point guards. The only thing they do share that are similar is that you do need a dynamic playmaker at that position, especially in today's NBA. So Sexton would kind of check off that box for the time being as far as an upgrade at that position in correlation to today's NBA. Because as Knicks fans, that's something we tend to not even notice or even talk about, is that we need to get more relative to today's league because we're kind of stuck on the past sometimes on how our teams look like when they were successful. We had guys that were very defensive-minded. They were scrappy. But at the same time, that worked back then. But the league now is so different with all the rule changes teams that dominate now tend to have a stretch five a stretch four at least one guy on the perimeter that can make consistent threes a point guard that's not necessarily a point guard but more of a playmaker on his own he can get his own points and at the same time the league changed the rules so much as far as how assists work that regular guys could get over five assists because assists now count as players catching the ball making one or two moves and getting a shot off still counts as an assist. So subconsciously, a lot of the fan base, and I include myself in it, we always tend to love the players that look like how the players did in the past because we've seen it work. We've seen the team become successful off of it. But in today's NBA, a lot of that stuff will no longer work. It's almost like the Nick fan favorites don't really fit into today's NBA as well as they used to. And you see it sort of play out with the Frank Nilakina hive. They love that player archetype. But at the end of the day, we see that that player archetype, even on a high level, aka Ben Simmons, it doesn't really work out long term, especially going against high level teams deep in the playoffs in today's NBA. So going back to Colin Sexton, he does check off the box as being a playmaker, especially at the point guard position in today's NBA. He can get his own shot off. He can create for himself, which is really important at that position. But let's also keep in mind he has played in dysfunctional Cleveland. And especially this season, we've seen guys who left one system and went to another, especially with coaches coaching guys up, a.k.a. Tyron Lue and Monty Williams. We've seen guys like Cameron Payne get coached up. DeAndre Aiden definitely got coached up this season. He's definitely a lot better. And especially guys like Reggie Jackson, we see him thriving with the Clippers. And that is shout out to Tyron Lou and Coach Monty Williams. So guys definitely could change teams and change systems and thrive in another. So the Knicks just giving up a draft pick for a guy like Colin Sexton 
and possibly we could use him as almost a safety net in case we don't land any free agents in 2022 at least we can still re-sign him especially if he thrives in a Thibodeau system so also guys getting coached up let's not forget about that because we've seen it play out especially in the 2021 season speaking on other things that are rumbling throughout the league of course we're hearing about Damian Lillard potentially wanting out of the Portland Trailblazers and then of course Dean being Dame going back on it saying that he doesn't want to leave Portland but he's sort of tippy-toeing around that loyalty branding that he's been using to brand himself over the past few years but in my view this is all cap he's definitely going to request out of Portland most likely after the Olympics are done Maybe he doesn't want all this media heat while they're down there trying to win a medal because it will be difficult for them to do so with all these rumors becoming a major distraction for the team. And you guys could definitely check out my other channel, Orange Cookies. I have a series in which I've been chronicling since two seasons ago, Damon CJ, a duo that's on the clock because I knew their time was running out and it's definitely ran out and the hiring of Chauncey Billups and the sort of miscommunication of Dame saying that he never really wanted Billups to become the coach. That's pretty much his out card of getting out of Portland. But going back to our beloved Knicks, if they do want to make a trade for Dame, they will have to sacrifice a lot of picks. And that will unfortunately include RJ Barrett. I know a lot of Knicks fans won't like that, but he will be included in that trade along with a ton of picks. And that is the cost of acquiring superstars right now. You look at the Anthony Davis trade, the Paul George trade, and most importantly, that Drew Holiday trade. The fact that the Pelicans were able to get three first round picks for Drew Holiday, that changed the whole landscape of acquiring players. And then you saw what James Harden went for. So this is the cost of acquiring stars. You pretty much got to gut out your whole team. And to be honest with you, there are other teams that have a much better position in acquiring Dame. You look at teams like the Miami Heat, the Denver Nuggets, the Dallas Mavericks, the Los Angeles Lakers, and especially, if they're smart, the Phoenix Suns. They have a lot of guys coming up on contracts. I don't think they could afford to keep all those guys. And they definitely could make a move to upgrade their point guard position by getting a guy like Dame. So there are other teams in a lot better position than the Knicks would, especially if the Knicks gave up a lot of their assets, they would pretty much be depleted. So once again, we have to look at the landscape. We have to look at the cost of acquiring stars right now in today's climate. And it requires a lot of draft picks and a lot of assets. But I wouldn't underestimate Leon Rose because if he does pull off a move like this to get a guy like Dame, best believe he's probably got an, a second trade on the back end to make this deal make sense, especially with all the connections that he has across the league with various front office people and players. So we cannot underestimate Leon Rose in a situation like this, that it won't be a double trade. Like it'll be two moves to make this whole thing make complete sense. Because in last year's draft, I tell you that, they were working them phones like crazy to not only move up in picks, but they were also making moves with multiple teams. So we've seen how far Leon Rose's connections could go.